so these are our tall grass season of burn research and demonstration plots that we started about eight years ago. These plots were started to help us demonstrate and then also do research looking at the effects of burning at different seasons of the year on the plant communities. Uh, we get a lot of questions from people about, well, what happens if we burn in July? What happens if we burned in December? Or what if, what if a wildfire come through my place and, and it got burned? And so what we want to do is have a place that we can actually show this to people, you know, what's going to happen and what kind of impacts they are. So what we did was we set aside an area and we set up two replications of seven plots. So there's 14 plots total and two of each one. We have a March-April burn, a May-June, a July-August, September-October, and then a November-December, and then we have two check plots that do, do not get burned at all. And these plots are burned in that two month, sometime in that two-month time frame, and then they're burned every two years. We just finished our fifth burn rotation on these plots, so they've been burned five times in the last eight years. And the remarkable things that most people come out here and look at is they see no difference. These plant communities are adapted to fire at any time of the year and that they can handle it. Uh, we've never had it too green to burn. The plots we burned just this last June, which was just a little over about two months ago from, from this date here, we had received two inches of rain two days before. It was 70% humidity the day we burned it and it burned. These plots are set up, they're not grazed. Uh, we don't have any grazing on them. We just wanted to use, just to look at the effects of fire, no other external stuff that can impact those, these plots. And so we wanted to do away with that. Plus also they're small plots and they're hard to graze. It can get too wet to burn, but a lot of times it's not gonna get too green to burn. Because the thing you have to remember is with growing season burns, when, when plants are green and actively growing, what you're actually burning is the old litter from the previous year's growth. You've got to have that to get the fire started and carry. If you do not have any old growth, the fire won't burn. Yeah, it will be too green to burn because there's nothing there to start a fire. But once you get it started and the heat from that fire starts to dry out the green vegetation, it adds again more fuel to the fire. We have not seen any kind of detrimental effect of the fire in any season of the year on any of these plots. These native plant communities are, of the Great Plains are adapted to fire at any season of the year. Of the perennial plant community that's here, what you will see is some subtle differences in a lot of the annual plants that come up. So a, a September, October, November type burn, you, you could possibly see a little more broomweed because broomweed has to overwinter as a rosette. It likes bare ground and it, it, it comes up in the fall. It germinates in the late summer and fall, and that's why you see it the following year. The July-August plots that we have here, we have a, a species of bee bomb that shows up just in these July plots, and they're not in any of the other plots. To reiterate, the perennial plant community is not impacted at all by burning in December, July, April, October. It doesn't matter. It's not gonna harm it. What you wanna do is pick out what is your goals and objectives? How will it benefit your management? It can help you get more fire on the ground when we're limited by season of the year when we burn, by burn bans, any other things that go on with that. It's, all, it's just a good alternative. Also looking at maybe what kind of little bit of subtle differences that you can see between those different seasons of burn, maybe for wildlife. So looking at different times of, times of the year for, for possible wildlife benefits. And again, also, again, we can see benefits for livestock as well, too, by changing crude protein cycles, you know, increasing them in the middle of the summer where they're usually falling really rapidly. So that's what the gist of these plots were for and, and what they do. 